The Precision Window Cutter is a lightweight, pneumatically powered pipe cutter to quickly and safely make longitudinal and circumferential cuts in steel, iron, and other materials with precise depth control, enabling access to previously inserted pipes without damage. The standard unit cuts a 16-inch window in about 45 minutes. Longer rail sets are available to make longer cuts without resetting the machine. The unit cuts iron, steel, and plastic. The longitudinal module cuts inch and a half pipe and larger. The standard circumferential module cuts 4 inch pipe and greater. Smaller blades are needed to cut inch and a half through 3 inch pipe circumferentially. For pipe sizes greater than 8 inch, additional chain extensions are required. The maximum cup depth is 3 quarters of an inch. To perform a typical 16 inch window cut, excavate a minimum of 36 inches along the length of the pipe and 20 inches either side of the pipe with at least 6 inches of clearance under the pipe. 12 inches if a full circumferential cut is to be performed. Also, make an area for the operator to stand upon. Please keep in mind that this illustration is only a guide. Project conditions and company procedures will dictate actual excavation size. Clean the entire work area of the pipe to provide a smooth, even surface. This is especially important when cutting on bare steel or cast iron pipes. However, common pipe coatings found on steel pipe, such as the yellow polyethylene wrap or black spiral wraps, do not have to be removed. Prepare the air treatment system for use and connect it to the on-site compressor. The air treatment system must be upright at all times to work properly. Failure to do so will contaminate the air motor with moisture and decrease cutting performance as well as overall service life. The system contains two units, the water separator and a lubricator. The water separator captures any condensate from the on-site compressor from reaching the cutter motor. Make sure the bowl is empty and adjust the drain screw so it constantly vents during operation. A sight glass located on the bowl will indicate any level of water within the bowl. The lubricator unit provides lubrication to the air motor and blade during operation. The lubricator bowl must be filled with oil prior to operation. To fill, simply remove the bowl by pushing up and turning the bowl counterclockwise a quarter turn. Fill the bowl with the recommended oil. Do not fill to the very top. Return the bowl to the unit. The dead man handle and the blowgun attaches to the two air outlets shown on the right. The lubricator drip control should be set to one drip per second. To set the drip control, air must be passing through the air treatment system. To do this, pull and hold the trigger on the blowgun when it is connected to create a continuous flow of air. Turn the lubricator drip control counterclockwise until one drip per second is seen through the drip control sight glass. Shown here is the blowgun. It is especially useful for keeping the tool and work area clean from dirt and swarf. The dead man handle provides the air connection from the air treatment system to either the circumferential or longitudinal module. When depressed, it allows airflow to the cutter module. When released, air is terminated, stopping the cutter. All fittings supplied with a rubber cap should be sealed when not connected to prevent any debris ingress that may contaminate the cutter module. To fit the blade, first remove the blade retaining nut. The two holes in the blade need to be aligned with the two locating pins. It is not possible to fit the blade with the teeth facing in the wrong direction. If you try to do that, you will not be able to align the blade holes with the locating pins. When the blade holes are lined up with the locating pins, the blade must be pushed until you hear them click into place. Also, the back part of the blade should be fully seated against the locating pin plate prior to tightening the blade retaining nut. Tighten the blade retaining nut onto the cutter module by hand. Make sure the nut flats are facing outwards.
To fully tighten the blade, turn the cutter onto its side and use the supplied wrenches to tighten the blade. Place the thinner wrench behind the blade onto the flats of the blade drive spigot and the other onto the blade retaining nut. Do not over tighten. The longitudinal module is capable of making 10 inch, 16 inch, or 24 inch longitudinal cuts without repositioning the machine using the available rail sets shown here. To change the rail set, remove the socket head cap screw from each side, then carefully remove each side bracket. Remove the chrome static rail, turn the longitudinal drive rail counterclockwise to remove it from the drive rail nut which is held inside the longitudinal housing. Take care not to misplace the three part drive bearings that are fitted on the ends of both sides of the longitudinal drive rail. To fit the desired size rail set, simply reverse the rail set removal process. Before fully tightening the rail set, it is important to square the longitudinal module. To do this, Place the longitudinal module onto a flat surface so all eight end plate contact points are firmly against the surface. Have someone securely hold down each end plate side while the other tightens the cap screw to prevent the unit from twisting. Please note that both end plates must be held securely. This video shows only one end plate being held simply for learning and illustration. Chains are used to fasten the circumferential and longitudinal modules. The standard unit is supplied with chain lengths for up to 8 inch diameter pipe. For larger pipe, optional chain extensions can be attached to the standard chain. Each of them is color coded, blue for up to 24 inch pipe, yellow for up to 18 inch pipe, and red for up to 12 inch pipe. The chain extensions are fitted using the connector parts pack included within the toolbox. This includes the master link connector, middle plate, side plate, and spring clip. To attach the chain extensions, line up the chains as shown here. Push to fit the master link connector into the link holes with the middle plate in the center of the chain. Then push on the side plate. Fashion the spring clip by placing the larger opening over one of the chain pins. The tapered end should be resting onto the adjacent pin. Using the channel lock pliers, place the nose of one jaw onto the back end of the spring clip and the other jaw onto the chain pin. Squeeze the pliers to fully engage the spring clip. To remove the chain extension, simply reverse the operation. If the pipe thickness is unknown, an ultrasonic pipe wall thickness meter can be optionally purchased. This tool measures the pipe wall thickness by sending out sound waves through the material and measures the time delay for the returning echo. To begin, press the middle button to bring up the menu and use the other buttons to scroll through the selections. First, select material and choose the pipe material you will be cutting. Then select zero from the menu choices to calibrate the gauge to zero. Place a small amount of couplant onto the gauge sensor and place the probe onto the sensor. An illustration will automatically be shown on the screen prompting you when to touch the sensor and when to release. Once complete, the gauge is ready to be used. Place a dime size amount of couplant gel onto the top of the pipe over multiple areas within the work area. Place the probe onto the pipe in the couplant gel. Make sure the line on the probe is in line with the pipe. Hold the probe steady for a few seconds and remove. The measurement will be shown on the display screen. Repeat the same process over multiple areas. Use the lowest measurement as the reference thickness since it's better to make the cut too shallow than too deep. Then write the measurement onto the pipe for quick reference. Making the longitudinal cut. Always perform the two longitudinal cuts first, followed by the two circumferential cuts. To begin the first longitudinal cut, secure the module onto the pipe where the casing will need to be removed. 
Typically, the longitudinal cuts are completed at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. A smaller or larger window can be made simply by positioning the module either further up or down on the pipe. Before securing the longitudinal module onto the pipe, make sure the longitudinal housing is in the starting position where the air inlet hose is trailing the housing. Never attempt to cut backwards or towards the air inlet hose. This will damage the blade. Turning the hex drive in the same direction as the arrows located on each side of the longitudinal module will progress the cutter forward. To secure the longitudinal module to the pipe, place the unit at the 12 o'clock position. Make sure both hooks are at their lowest position. Pull the chain tight around the pipe. Begin feeding the chain end under the bar and pull it completely through using the hook tool. When attaching the chain to the hooks, bend one link over and engage the chain pin so it is fully seated into the hooks. Make sure to leave one free link of play in the chain. This will make it easier to remove the chains when the work is completed. Next, position the longitudinal module into the desired location. At this time, it is not necessary to mark out the entire window cut on the pipe. It is easier to complete the first longitudinal cut at the desired location, then mark out the remaining cuts. This will be discussed later in the video. Please note, when the cutter module is connected, the blade will be about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of the longitudinal block. Also note, the center of the longitudinal block is also the center of the blade. Therefore, this will be where the blade is cutting at the desired depth. Using the 10 millimeter ratchet, tighten the chain tensioners equally and alternately. Make sure the chains are straight. Do not completely tighten one chain before tightening the other. Once the chains are initially tight, tap the chains with a hammer to ensure that all links lie flat against the pipe. Then re-tighten the chains until moderate resistance is felt. Do not over tighten. It is extremely important when fully tightening the longitudinal module onto the pipe that the rails and end plates are square and not twisted. All eight contact points on the end plates must be touching the pipe. This will ensure a straight cut and reduce excessive wear on the blade. Next, connect the dead man's handle to the longitudinal module. Before connecting the cutter, Quickly depress the trigger to blow out any possible debris that may be inside the mounting block. This will help keep contaminants from entering the cutter module air motor, prolonging service life. Before connecting the cutter module, make sure the blade is secured properly as discussed earlier. Lubricate the o-ring with silicone gel and inspect it for damage. Check to see if the small filter is fitted inside the air transfer fitting. The silencer located on the rear of the unit should be clean and free of debris. If it is dirty or blocked, this will restrict the air exhaust and reduce motor performance. To connect the cutter module, simply plug the air transfer fitting into the hole located on the longitudinal block. Then tighten the thumb bolts. Do not over tighten. Make sure the rails are clean and lubricated. Depress the dead man's handle and slowly turn the depth adjustment screw clockwise until the blade touches the pipe and stop. 
you will know when the blade is in contact with the pipe, when you hear a change in the motor pitch, and feel a slight vibration in the cutter. Turn on the depth gauge and insert it into the cutter module. Push in and hold. Make sure the bottom of the gauge is touching the cutter module. Press zero and carefully remove without touching any of the buttons. Set aside in a safe location. Now the cutter has been zeroed, we can now begin our plunge cut. Depress the dead man handle and turn the adjustment screw to the number of turns necessary to reach the predetermined pipe thickness. One turn clockwise on the adjustment screw progresses the blade to a depth of one millimeter. For example, if the pipe wall was measured to be five millimeters thick, then turning the adjustment screw for five revolutions would cut through the pipe. When the location of the inserted pipe is unknown, it is always recommended to cut just short of the thickness of pipe, leaving only a ribbon of metal. Once you have reached the desired number of turns on the adjustment screw, release the dead man handle and insert the depth gauge to double check the blade depth before progressing the cut forward. Then lock the blade into place by turning the blade locking screw clockwise. Do not over tighten. Depress the dead man handle and fit the 10 millimeter ratchet wrench onto one of the hex drives located on the sides of the longitudinal module. Turn the ratchet in the direction of the arrow to progress the cut forward at a slow, moderate pace. Never attempt to use a power drive to progress the cut. Once the cutter touches the rubber bumper, the first cut is complete. Loosen the blade locking screw, depress and hold the dead man handle, turn the blade adjustment screw counterclockwise to fully retract the blade. When the blade indicator is even with the cutter module surface, the blade is fully retracted. Disconnect the dead man handle. Return the cutter module to the starting position. Loosen the thumb bolts and remove the cutter module. Slightly loosen the chain tensioners by turning them counterclockwise, then position the longitudinal module at the 12 o'clock position. Completely loosen the chain tensioners. To disengage the chain from the hooks, position the open end of the 10 millimeter wrench on the side of the chain between the hooks and the bar as shown here. Remove the longitudinal module. If desired, the longitudinal cut can be continued to make a larger window simply by repositioning and refastening the module. It is highly recommended to progress the subsequent cuts towards the completed cuts. To do this, leave the longitudinal module in the ending position after the first completed cut. Slacken the chain tensioners and reposition the module so the center of the longitudinal block is at the edge of the completed cut. Also, position the side edge of the block about 1 16th of an inch away from the side of the cut. Therefore, when the cutter module is connected, the blade will be in line with the previous cut. Next, connect the cutter. Begin to retract the longitudinal module. 
the indicator line on the cutter module should closely match the previous cut. Then completely return the longitudinal module to the starting position and progress the cut towards the previous cut. Now that the first longitudinal cut is made, mark out the remaining window cut. Insert a ruler into the end of each completed cut and mark each edge. Then draw two straight circumferential lines to the proposed second longitudinal cut. A length of tape or a welder's pipe wrap around ruler will make it easier to draw a straight circumferential line. Sketch the longitudinal cut line simply by connecting the two circumferential lines. This will ensure each circumferential cut will travel through each longitudinal cut. Please note, the proposed second longitudinal cut line location depends on the desired window size. Then extend each longitudinal line approximately 8 inches or more beyond the window. This will make it easier to view the beginning or the end of the cut when the machine is mounted to the pipe. Refasten the longitudinal module and complete the second longitudinal cut. The circumferential module is capable of performing a 300 degree cut in a single pass without readjusting the chain. It has two 10 mm hexagon drive pegs located on the side. These are used to progress the cut by fitting a wrench. Either peg can be used depending on operator preference. The unit will only advance in the direction of a cut due to the safety ratchet. This can be released by pushing the ratchet release knob to allow the module to freewheel. The circumferential module is fastened to the pipe using a chain. It also travels around the pipe over the chain as the cut is progressed. To fasten the module to the pipe, choose the proper chain length according to the pipe size. Make sure the chain tensioner roller is at the lowest position. If it is not, turn the chain tensioner counterclockwise until it stops. To fit the chain, fold it in half and place it over the chain tensioner roller located inside the circumferential module. The tips of the hooks must face outwards when placing it on the pipe. To place the module onto the pipe at the 12 o'clock position. Then position the chain hooks so they lay flat against the pipe. It may be necessary to pull up on the ratchet release to allow the module to freewheel to move the chain to the correct position. Pull the other end of the chain close to the pipe, then fold one link over and engage the chain pin into the hook. The chain should fit loosely around the pipe. Then move the attached chain so the hooks are out of the way of the desired circumferential cut. Turn the chain tensioner clockwise to take up some of the slack in the chain. Position the edge of the circumferential module about 1 16th of an inch outside the previously marked cut line. When the cutter module is fastened to the circumferential module, the blade will be located on the cut line. Using the 10 mm ratchet, turn the chain tensioner clockwise to tighten the module onto the pipe. Once moderate resistance is felt, manually move the module forwards and backwards 300 degrees around the pipe to ensure the chains are straight. Lift up and hold the ratchet release knob when moving the module backwards. It may be necessary to move the module slightly forward to release the ratchet release knob. Move the module to the 12 o'clock position and retighten until it can only be progressed with the wrench attached to one of the hexagon drive pegs. Again, move the module forwards and backwards 300 degrees around the pipe. Check to make sure the chain is straight.
Bring the circumferential module to the 12 o'clock position. Connect the dead man handle to the circumferential module. Before fastening the cutter module, quickly depress and release the dead man handle to blow out any debris that may remain in the housing or in the airline. Then connect the cutter module, fit it with the blade into the circumferential module. Tighten the thumb screws until moderate resistance is felt. Push the ratchet release knob and use the wrench to retract the circumferential module until the indicator line on the housing matches the previously marked longitudinal line. Then release the knob. At this point, it is extremely important to push down on the module until it stops. This fully seats the circumferential module's ratchet release against a chain pin, preventing the module from slightly reversing when beginning the cut. Failure to seat the module prior to beginning the cut will damage the cutting edges on the blade and severely decrease blade service life. Now you are ready to begin the circumferential cut. Depress the dead man's handle and slowly turn the depth adjustment screw clockwise until the blade touches the pipe and stop. You will know when the blade is in contact with the pipe when you hear a change in the motor tone and feel a slight vibration in the cutter. Turn on the depth gauge and insert it into the cutter module. Push in and hold. Make sure the bottom of the gauge is touching the cutter module. Press zero and carefully remove without touching any of the buttons. Set aside in a safe location. Now that the cutter has been zeroed, we can now begin our plunge cut. Depress the dead man handle and turn the adjustment screw to the number of turns necessary to reach the predetermined pipe thickness. One turn clockwise on the adjustment screw progresses the blade to a depth of one millimeter. It is always recommended to cut slightly less than the thickness of pipe, leaving only a ribbon of metal. Once you have reached the desired number of turns on the adjustment screw to achieve the plunge depth, release the dead man handle and insert the depth gauge to double check the blade depth. Next, lock the blade into place by turning the blade locking screw clockwise. Do not over tighten. Fit the wrench onto one of the hexagon drive pegs and depress the dead man handle. Slowly begin to drive the cut forward. Press the cut until the indicator line is slightly past the marked longitudinal cut line. Release the dead man handle to stop the blade. Insert the side edge of the steel ruler into the cut to make sure the cut went deep enough without going completely through. You should only be able to push through a thin layer of metal. Loosen the blade locking screw to release the blade. Then depress the dead man handle and turn the blade depth adjustment screw counterclockwise to completely remove the blade out of the pipe. Then release the dead man handle and continue to retract the blade until the depth indicator is even with the cutter module surface.
Disconnect the dead man handle and return the dust cap. Loosen the thumb bolts and remove the cutter module. Completely loosen the chain tensioner and move the circumferential module to the 12 o'clock position. To disengage the chain from the pipe, push on the tips of each chain hook using the hook tool. Then remove the circumferential module from the pipe. Position the module to make the second circumferential cut. Complete the cut by repeating the same steps as previously described. The precision window cutter is also capable of removing the entire sleeve from the host pipe if required. However, most of the time, it is not necessary to remove the entire sleeve from the host. Simply cutting a larger window and leaving a small longitudinal strip of metal in place will usually provide enough access to the inserted pipe. Always follow your company procedures and please use caution when completing the first 360 degree cut. Compressive forces may exist on the host pipe from earth movement, which may cause the pipe to move in an unknown direction when the energy is released. To remove the sleeve, it is recommended to perform a complete window cut first in order to view the exact location of the inserter pipe. Whenever possible, lift and suspend the inserter pipe up away from the cut. These actions will help prevent accidental damage to the inserter pipe. Fasten the circumferential module and cutter onto the pipe. Make sure the connected chain hooks are out of the way of the proposed cut. Continue to progress the cut to 360 degrees by repeating the operational steps as previously outlined. PLCS recommends using our end seal kits to prevent the PE from touching the sharp edges of the host pipe, protecting the PE from damage and stress cracking. The end seal foam kits can be installed in minutes. The fabric mold is fitted onto the pipe. A special foam is poured into the mold. As the foam cures, it expands to completely fill the annular space, bonding to the pipe surface, offering PE, pipe protection, and sealing the annular space against water and debris. These kits are easy to use and provide a perfect foam off every time.